Fernando Alonso has had one of the most illustrious and yet peculiar Formula One careers, many arguing that he is one of the most purely talented drivers that the grid has ever seen, and that the two world championships he's picked up so far don't really tell the story of how good the Spaniard has been in Formula One. And I want to take that idea and condense that down to the 2022 season, because I feel like the 2022 season has kind of been a microcosm of Fernando Alonso's career. We've seen flashes of absolute brilliance from him, but it's been tainted by bad luck, poor circumstance and poor reliability issues from the Alpine team. I want to delve into where Fernando Alonso could be in this world championship if he hadn't have got so unlucky. This season's Alpine car has found itself incredibly competitive, often being the fourth fastest or even third fastest car over the course of a Grand Prix weekend. And with a driver in Fernando Alonso who said himself he feels is highest level driving wise since starting in Formula One, it sounds like a perfect combination. He believes that he's lost up to 70 points over the course of the season so far. So don't worry, Fernando, I'm here to do the maths for you. Let's break it down. So far this season, we've had 11 Grand Prix and two sprint races in which Fernando Alonso could have picked up points, starting with Bahrain. Qualified in eighth place, finished in ninth place. And actually, this was one of the Grand Prix that was fairly plain sailing, considering it was a brand new Alpine concept with a brand new Renault engine in the back. They did fairly well, so no more extra points hit. The Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, though, saw his first spell of bad luck. Qualified in seventh place, with Ocon actually qualifying in fifth place. Ocon just loves the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. That Alpine looked incredibly quick, only for Alonso to come to a halt after a water pump failure when in seventh place. So if he would have finished that race in seventh place, he would have picked up an extra six points. In Australia, some argue that he was on for a pole position lap. I genuinely think that he would have probably qualified in around third or fourth, which is no mean feat considering he's in an Alpine car. The hydraulic failure sent him careening into the wall at turn 13 before having to put the car back together again only to finish the race in 17th place. And this was mainly due to high tyre wear and a mistimed safety car stop. So let's say Fernando turns that second row into another 7th place finish and picks up another 6 points. In Imola, he did okay to finish the sprint race in ninth place, just missing out on the points there by one position, but then in the Grand Prix itself was collected by a sliding Mick Schumacher on the first lap into turn three. Unfortunately, that damaged Fernando Alonso's right-hand side of his side pod. He was completely and utterly missing it for many, many laps. He tried to continue, but unfortunately had to take his second retirement of the season. Let's just say if he hadn't been collected by Mick Schumacher and he ended up finishing where he started in ninth place, so gained another couple of points there. In Miami, Fernando Alonso started 11th and finished 11th, obviously with that collision with Pierre Gasly and also a track limits infringement. The FIA ended up giving him two penalties at the end of the Grand Prix, and we'll hear more about those later. But honestly, I think this was Fernando Alonso's worst Grand Prix of the year, I think. The Miami track just didn't really suit him. He didn't really get to grips with it. And that Alpine car didn't suit the Miami style track either. And therefore, I'm not going to be able to give him any more points for Miami. Now, Spain is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting for me because Fernando Alonso ended up starting from the back of the grid, taking his fourth power unit of the year in just six races. How unlucky do you have to be to use four power units in just six races? But he managed to turn that last place into a ninth place finish. Had he not started at the back of the grid, where would he have been able to finish? Well, in Spain, Esteban Ocon managed to qualify in 12th place. And on average, Fernando Alonso outqualifies Ocon by around about three positions. So let's say that Alonso starts in ninth place instead of finishing in ninth place. Now, Ocon had slightly better race pace in Spain in comparison to Alonso, but the Spaniard was in traffic over the course of a lot of the Grand Prix. So let's just kind of take Ocon's race pace as similar to Fernando Alonso's race pace on the day. Ocon managed to finish in 7th place. So how about we say Alonso was able to finish in 7th place instead? I think that's well within his range and definitely within the drive that he delivered on that Spanish Grand Prix weekend. So let's give him 7th in that one. Monaco was a fairly clean weekend overall, bar a crash in Q3 that had come just after Sergio Perez had also crashed in Q3, so it didn't actually cost Alonso anything. Alonso started in seventh place and finished in seventh place, and with an absolutely monumental train behind him. There is no way that Fernando Alonso can argue he should have finished anywhere higher than seventh, because he was slowing down the entire pack over the course of that weekend. With Baku actually having a fairly similar vibe to Monaco for Alonso, it was a fairly comfortable weekend, qualifying in the top 10 again and springing forward to finish in 7th place on the Sunday, so picked up a few points there. 
Canada, though, could have been a completely different story for Alonso. He put in one of the performances of the season on the Saturday in the wet during qualifying. He was able to put it into second place on the starting grid, just behind Max Verstappen in a Red Bull. And he started there in the race, and the race was disappointing to say the least another reliability issue led to the car clipping on the straights and fernando alonso just tumbling down the order eventually finishing in seventh only for it to turn from bad to awful as similar to miami he was handed a penalty after the race for weaving in front of bottas this time around and subsequently dropped to ninth place on the grid and honestly i think if he had a working car he could have done something special the spaniard looks so good in canada and i don't think it's crazy to say that he might have been able to battle it around probably not with the red bulls and ferraris but maybe with the mercedes cars like maybe he'd have been in and amongst it with george russell i think probably the best finish for him still would have been a fifth place so that's what i'm going to give fernando alonso if he would have started the grand prix and not had those reliability issues but maybe he could have done something more let's give him fifth for now and I think that's fair because he was able to go and finish in fifth place just a couple of weeks later during the Silverstone Grand Prix in Great Britain. And I know that was a similar vibe where we had a wet qualifying dry race similar to Canada. And there was a little bit of chaos at the start with Joe and George Russell, of course. But I feel like back to back fifth place finishes would have definitely been on the cards for Fernando Alonso. Which leads us finally to Austria, which was an absolute mess for Fernando Alonso. He had bad luck in every single session. Qualifying, sprint, race, it all fell apart. First of all, he damaged his floor during qualifying at Turn 1. Even though so many drivers went over the curbs at Turn 1, of course, Fernando Alonso came out worst of anybody, meaning that he could only manage an 8th place start compared to Esteban Ocon's 5th place. And I've already touched on the fact that Esteban Ocon's qualifying has been nowhere near as good as Fernando Alonso's this year. So Fernando Alonso probably would have been ahead of his teammate there. Then in the sprint, the electrical issues that he had meant that Alonso couldn't even take part. And honestly, I think, again, would have probably finished at least behind his teammate in Esteban Ocon, probably in front. So let's say that he gets seventh place there. That's another couple of points for Alonso. Then came the race in which Fernando Alonso was absolutely flying as we touched on started from the back of the grid because of that issue in the sprint race but was running all the way up into ninth place before luck struck again because it's fernando alonso and of course it did when he went in for a second pit stop his front left tire was not secured properly so he had to pit again falling all the way back into 14th place a wag of a finger later and he finished the race in 10th picking up just one point over the course of the weekend where he looked so incredibly quick throughout and s van ock on his teammate ended up finishing in fifth in that one and I genuinely think that Fernando Alonso would have finished ahead of Esteban Ocon had he had the luck over the course of the Grand Prix weekend and maybe just one of the three sessions go his way. So I'm going to give Fernando Alonso back to back to back fifth place finishes for the last three Grand Prix. So this is what Fernando Alonso's season would have looked like had he not been so unlucky, in my opinion, putting in all of his race finishes in comparison to his actual race finishes. And I've called them Fernando and Lucky Fernando, so you can see the difference. And you can see that orange line is a lot lower than the blue line of the actual Fernando Alonso's finishes. And therefore, how many more points would he have picked up? Well, currently, Fernando Alonso sits on 29 points in the championship. He's in 10th place behind Valtteri Bottas, Esteban Ocon, Lando Norris in that best of the rest category and i estimate that he would actually be on 66 points had he not got so unlucky over the course of the season that's a 37 point swing for the spaniard not quite the 70 that he quoted in his interview but would place him in that best of the rest slot ahead of lando norris by just a couple of points and that's obviously not taken into account that Lando Norris would have probably also lost some points because Fernando Alonso has gained some positions along the way there. Plus, it would also mean that Alpine are clearly in fourth place, well ahead of McLaren. They're currently level on points right now. And with those additional 37 points, Alpine would have all but sealed fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. Now, obviously, this is all just a thought exercise. There's no way that Fernando Alonso can get those points back. But I think it does outline a couple of things that Alpine need to look at over the course of the season. Obviously, they've had those reliability issues, but it's only really come on one side of the garage. If you look at Esteban Ocon, he's quietly having a really, really good season. It's been very, very consistent. Actually, only one DNF in Silverstone this year for the French driver. Secondly, when they're looking back at the season, they're being black and white about the points and deciding whether to go for Fernando Alonso or Oscar Piastri for next season Fernando Alonso has quite a bit of a leg to stand on he has been very very good and he talked about himself as I touched on at the beginning that he's at his highest level right now 
I kind of agree with that. He's been so incredibly consistent over the course of the year. Unfortunately, it's been the car that's kind of let him down a lot of the time. And those reliability issues have not been his fault along the way. And he would be in that best of the rest slot, in my opinion, had he not had those reliability issues and had he had the car that consistently finished where he was able to put it. So in this debate surrounding Fernando Alonso moving into next year, as much as I want to see Oscar Piastri on the grid, I think one more year of Fernando Alonso would be amazing for Alpine. If they can finish fourth this year, finish that best of the rest slot, and then use Fernando Alonso to try and propel themselves up into the top three. Mercedes still can't quite get it right. If Ferrari maybe have a down year or Red Bull have a down year after a couple of years of battling for championships, maybe Alpine can make that next step forward and finally break into that bracket of the top three. They are the only other works team on the grid. They don't have an engine from anybody else. They might be able to supply an engine to another team, get Oscar Piastri in another seat and use Fernando Alonso to properly push themselves into the top three. But that's just my thoughts and feelings on Fernando Alonso's up and down 2022 season, mainly down 2022 season when it's come to most of these Grand Prix. And I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think Fernando Alonso will still be able to finish seventh in the Drivers' Championship this year? Because I think he deserves it. But do you think he'll be able to get it by the end of the year? Whilst you're down there, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're trying to get to 9,000 subscribers with our goal being 10,000 by the end of the season. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.